If you have an older horse, an older horse might have different needs as far as his feeding than say a younger horse. And now that I have two senior horses, one with some special dietary needs, I thought I would share with you what I do and how I go about feeding him with his special needs. Hello my equestrian friends, it's me Lisa, the Budget Equestrian. Welcome back to today's video. And I'm sure most of you know that I did get a new horse. He is awesome, he's adorable, and his name is Pleasant. And Pleasant is a Dutch warm blood. He is 22 years old, and for most of his life, Pleasant was a show horse. So he was used to living in fancy barns where all of his needs were met. So coming here has been a little bit different for him, but I think he is settling in just fine. And one thing that I had to get used to, he has a little bit different feeding needs because of his age and mainly because of his dental issues. So I guess when horses are kept in show barns, this may not be all the time. So, so don't yell at me, but this is just what I learned about him that his teeth were floated and floated and floated and floated. And even if they didn't need it, his teeth were still floated. So now here we are with a 22 year old horse who basically doesn't have teeth that can break down hay the way he should be able to in order to eat it and get the nutrition that he needs from his forage. So Pleasant mainly gets his nutrition from hay pellets. And these hay pellets have been softened down with water so that it makes it easier for him to eat. And I wasn't really sure how to go about doing this. And that's why I really wanted to make this video, just in case you have questions about feeding a senior horse or are thinking about feeding hay pellets or even beet pulp for that matter. Now, nice disclaimer here. I am not a veterinarian and I am not an equine nutritionist. So if this is something that you wanna do for your horse or you're thinking about doing, I would highly encourage you to discuss it with your veterinarian and perhaps an equine nutritionist too to make sure that you're making the right decision and the best decision for your horse. Okay, disclaimer done. Let's get into some hay pellets. So like I said, the bulk of Pleasant's meal comes from hay pellets. And at first I was really intimidated of making his meals. It's kind of a mush. Actually, it is a mush, it's not kind of, it is a mush. And to break down the hay pellets, all you have to do is add water. So what I'll do is take one scoop full of hay pellets, put that in a bucket, and then I add roughly two to two and a half gallons of water to the pellets. I always make sure to add cold water because I don't want the hay pellets to ferment. If the feed starts to ferment, then it can cause problems in his digestive tract, meaning colic, so I don't want to have these hay pellets start to ferment. And the hay pellets that I've been using, which work really well, and they're readily available at most feed stores I've gone to, are Stanley hay pellets. So they have alfalfa pellets, they have alfalfa timothy pellets, and they have timothy pellets, and then they also have orchard grass pellets. They also have a new one, I think it's called teft grass, tuft grass, I don't know, but they have that new pellet that's coming out as well. And depending on what your horse's nutritional needs are, will determine which pellet is best for him. So when I got Pleasant, he was on orchard grass pellets. And after doing some research, I learned that the alfalfa timothy pellets have more calories, which he needs calories right now. So I have transitioned him from the orchard grass to the alfalfa timothy pellets. And on the Stanley package, it tells you how to soften the pellets. It tells you to add the water at least 30 minutes prior to feeding. So typically what I'll do, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, but we put the pellets in the bucket, we add cold water, two to two and a half gallons, and then I usually prepare that about 90 minutes to two hours before he eats. That allows the pellets to soak up all of the water and they get really soft and it literally looks like mush or a bran mash per se. A lot of people like to use bran mashes for their horses. This is a perfect example of what a bran mash, in my opinion, should look like. So once the hay pellets have broken down and it's just the mush, 
I also like to add some beet pulp. And beet pulp might be a good addition for your horse. I know both of my horses like it. And again, I use the Stanley products because they're readily available and they're affordable. So they make a beet pulp pellet and they also make beet pulp shreds. I prefer the beet pulp shreds because there's no added molasses. So beet pulp and beet pulp shreds are the byproduct of breaking down sugar beets. So this is what's left over. And for the beet pulp pellets, most of them have added molasses and that's what helps give it that pellet form. The beet pulp shreds is literally just the shreds that are remaining, I guess, from <laughs> the sugar beet. But they're dried out. So before you feed beet pulp pellets or beet pulp shreds to your horse, you really need to add water to reconstitute it because if you don't, they could choke. Now I have known a lot of people that have used the beet pulp for their horses and this is actually the first time that I have ever used it and I'm so glad that I have found it and decided to do it. It offers extra calories and it's also processed in the hindguts so it can help keep your horse's intestines really nice and healthy. Now with the beet pulp, just like everything else, everybody has their own way of doing this. And I've seen a lot of videos where people will put their beet pulp in and then they use hot water to soften it. Now the hot water, I don't know if that's the greatest idea. Again, because this can cause fermentation and we don't wanna feed our horses products that are fermenting in their stomach because then that can create gas, which in turn can create colic. We don't like colic, colic is bad. So what I like to do is I take a container, I fill it halfway full of the beet pulp shreds, then I fill the container to the top with cold water. Right now, during the winter, it's easy for me to keep a container of the beet pulp nice and cold and I don't have to worry about it fermenting. So I keep it in the garage and then I just put the softened beet pulp on top of Pleasant's hay mash. And I also have been feeding the beet pulp shreds to Frisbee and it's nice because then I can mix in his supplements and it kind of looks like gravy train, like what you would feed to dogs. And so I always think of gravy train when I'm mixing up Frisbee's complete feed along with his beet pulp and his supplements. I know, I'm easily entertained. But in order to be ultra safe when you're feeding beet pulp, whether it be shreds or the pellets, you really want to make sure that it's soaked so that your horse doesn't potentially choke on the beet pulp. And it's really not that hard. But again, I always use cold water when I'm softening the beet pulp, the same way that I use cold water when I'm making the mush for Pleasant out of the hay pellets. And once I have the hay mush and then the beet pulp on top of it, I use a big spoon to mix everything together. This way I'm looking at the consistency of his meal. If it's too firm or there's not enough water, I just add more water. And I haven't had an instant yet where I've added too much water. He seems to like it whether it's soupy or just the right consistency. But the right consistency that I have found by adding about two gallons of water when I'm softening the hay pellets in the beginning is I can take the plastic spoon and I can stick it in the middle of the hay pellets and it stands up on its own. That's the consistency I go for. So by adding about two gallons of water to one scoop of the hay pellets gives a really great starting point and then it's easy to add extra water if I need it. Then after that's all mixed up, I take it out to the barn and I add in just a little bit of the Triple Crown Senior feed to it. Not a whole lot, maybe a half a cup to a cup. And then I add in the Omega Fields Horse Shine along with some electrolytes. I mix it all up and then I take it out to him in his stall. He has two separate feed buckets, so I put some in the outside feed bucket as well as some in the stall feed bucket to give him different places that he can eat. Now he's learned that this is what I do, so he'll start at one feed bucket and then he goes to the other one, which is fine, but I just like to have different places for him to get his mush. Now even though Pleasant doesn't process or digest his hay like Frisbee does, I do put a hay net in his stall in the morning and in the evening, and then he has free choice hay throughout the day. And I do this for his own satisfaction as far as like grazing. 
he can still eat it and I haven't had any issues with him choking on the hay. So I like to make it so that he has the ability to access hay if he wants to, so he can chew on it or, you know, mimic the grazing process. And he eats it just fine. He just can't digest it the same way that other horses do. So that is how I deal with a senior horse and how I deal with feeding a horse with dental concerns. Again, like I said in the beginning, if your horse has dental issues or you're curious about learning about more of how to better feed your horse, you can always speak with your veterinarian or an equine nutritionalist or both if you wanna cover all your bases. But for me, this works and hopefully it was helpful for you too. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch all my other DIY projects product reviews, and horse-related videos showing you how to make the most of the time that you have with your horse. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.